Dear students, in this section, we will try to cover a topic called as projectile motion. Uh, this part of the lecture is not meant for the engineering students, even though they may recall their uh, basics, what they have studied in their plus one and plus two standards related to the projectile motion. This is highly intended for students who are undergoing their plus one and plus two, especially for the course physics. So, in this one, we are going to discuss about the projectile motion. Uh, for example, if I am going to drop a pen, a marker like this, this motion is not projectile because this motion is something but is generally called as freely falling body. Now, when I am going to drop this marker, automatically what happens? This marker is falling down. This is falling, falling down because it has been attracted by the gravity and this can be going down but this motion is not called as projectile motion because we have not given any initial velocity on the other hand if i am going to have a floor okay this is the floor there is a person a there is a person b they are going to play football they are going to play football now the person a kicks the ball from a to the person b in the ground so the ball is going to roll like this and is going to reach the position B. Now also we are given an initial velocity at A and it goes and reaches the point B. But we never call this as projectile motion because this ball is not influenced by the gravity. This ball is not influenced by the gravity. So now we come to two cases, two extreme cases. In the first case, I am going to drop a marker, let us say is a point C, the point C is nothing but my marker. Here I am going to drop, I am just going to leave it, so the marker is coming down. So this freely falling body is not a projected motion because it has been attacked by the gravity, but on the other hand, we have not given the initial velocity. On the other hand, when I am going to have two players who are going to pass the ball on the ground, the player A gives some force or I can tell the player imparts some velocity initially to the ball at A and the ball goes to B. Here this initial velocity is there, but it's not attacked or attracted by the gravity and hence this is also not what? A projectile motion. Then what is a projectile motion? That may be your question. Okay. So the projectile motion is nothing but I have a ground. Let us say this, I will have a cricket ground. Okay. So here the wicket keeper is there and the fielder is here. Okay, now the ball is being thrown by the fielder to the wicket keeper. This motion, if it goes to throw the ball on the air and is going to be received by the wicket keeper, this motion is called as projectile motion. This path which is traversed by the cricket ball is nothing but what? Projectile motion. Why? Because the fielder gives an initial velocity, he throws a ball. So he has to give a initial velocity. And the path is determined by the attraction of the gravity. And the path is attracted by the gravity. And finally, it goes and reaches the wicket keeper. And finally, it goes and reaches the wicket keeper. Okay, so what is the necessary condition for a projectile motion? It should be given an initial velocity and whose path should be attacked or attracted by the gravity is known as projectile motion. Any object which is given an initial velocity and its path is influenced by gravity is known as projectile motion. So, these two cases are not considered to be what? These two cases are not considered to be projectile motion, whereas this case is considered to be projectile motion. Even if you want to take football, if a player is going to kick the ball and the ball goes in the air and goes land somewhere, then the motion is called as what? Projectile motion. So, I am not against the football. So, in football also we can see uh, there is a projectile motion, but when the uh, one of the players is going to kick the ball, the ball goes into the air. So, some initial velocity is given and his path is traversed by the gravity or influenced by the gravity and hence it is called as what? Projectile motion. So, now you came, now you come to know what is the meaning of a real projectile motion. So, what are the questions or what are the physics which you may expect from this motion? So, you may ask. So, at what force I had to throw from the fielder end to the wicket keeper so that the ball will go and reach the 
wicket keeper what is the horizontal distance that the particle may travel that is about the range so the range up to which i had kick or i had to throw the ball from one end to another end is called what my uh, range so for example if i got to throw the ball from the fielder at the boundary to the wicket keeper so the horizontal distance the shortest distance is called what range and sometime a cricket player hits a sixer and nowadays we can see in the ipl match and other world cup matches they are trailing how much height it went and how much distance it covered so they will tell it is covered nearly 33 meters and the total distance covered is 96 meters like this we can see in the television and all so what does it says so what are the maximum height the ball reaches and what are the maximum distance in the horizontal direction the ball goes so these are the questions which we will be, will be able to predict it by the help of the projectile motion then you may be interested to know what is the time of flight so if i want to hit a six from this point to this point covering distance of 96 meters and go say a distance of 33 meter height so what is the time of flight of this ball from this end to this end we can calculate we can calculate with the help of what with the projectile motion so we are very curious to know how the projectile motion has been influenced and what are the basic equations and how we can derive the range the maximum height and the time of flight and the time of flight so these are the uh, three important things which should, we should know and what at what angle i have to throw so that i can get the maximum distance okay i'll repeat one question at what angle i have to throw the ball so that the ball will reach a maximum distance that also we are going to derive and we are going to then uh, apply these equations to the practical problems to get the results let us continue further if i have a force which is inclined i have a force force is a vector so i have a force which is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal generally we can take the horizontal to be the floor or the ground okay so if there is a force f whenever the force is inclined whenever the force is at inclined direction there is a possibility that this force can be resolved into its horizontal and vertical components it can be resolved into what is horizontal and vertical components so let us draw a vertical from here so this angle will be definitely what 90 degree so it forms a rectangle triangle let us give a name as what a b and c let us give a name as what a b and c now let us say if this inclined force is there what will be its corresponding horizontal component and what will be its corresponding vertical component i'll repeat once again whenever there is a inclined force i want to know what will be its corresponding horizontal component and what will be its corresponding vertical component let us say the corresponding horizontal component is ab let us say that force is fx fx stands for the horizontal force f is a normal letter whereas x is a subscript similarly the vertical component of this force will be bc which is nothing but what f suffix y so if there is a inclined force i can resolve them into its horizontal and vertical components as fx and fy now let us try we know only capital f but we want to know what is fx we want to know what is fy so for this we know the pythagoras theorem or pythagoras theorem that cos theta cos theta equal to what adjacent side by hypotenuse adjacent side by hypotenuse here the adjacent side is what for the theta the adjacent side is fx the opposite side is fy the hypotenuse is what f or ac so the adjacent side is nothing but ab the hypotenuse is nothing but what ac okay so from this what is cos theta cos theta will be equal to fx by capital f so already we know f we want to find only fx so fx will be equal to what f into cos theta so always we can know if you have a, any vector quantity which is inclined at angle theta to the horizontal its horizontal component will be what f cos theta it will be what f cos theta for example instead of this f if i am going to have the velocity component as u the horizontal component of this velocity will be what ux will be equal to what u into cos theta by using the same formula i can tell so the force is a vector similarly the velocity is also a vector i can resolve into its horizontal vertical component so out of the velocity u it will be what ux will be equal to what u cos theta similar to what we are derived for fx equal to f cos theta 
Okay, so we can resolve any vector is sarsan component will be what? The corresponding vector into its cos component, the cos of the angle. Now let us come to sin theta. Sin theta is what? Opposite by hypotenuse. What is opposite side? It is BC. What is hypotenuse? AC. So what is BC? FI. What is AC? F. So we can see sin theta is equal to FI by F. Our interest is only to find FI because we already know F. So F sin theta. So if we know the angle theta, and if you know the resonant force, then we can resolve them into is also come as F cos theta and is vertical moment F y as what? F sin theta. I hope it is very clear. I hope it is very clear. And already you may know this basic salary, but better to revise it once again. Yeah. So I will erase these things. I will write now F x equal to F cos theta, F y equal to F sin theta. Along with this, always is better to write in the vector form. So, what is the vector form means? F vector is equal to F x into i plus F y into j. So, what is i in the x direction? What is j along the y direction? That is the meaning. So, what is now F? Is called the vector addition. F will be equal to now. F x is what? F cos theta of i. What is f y? f sin theta of j. So, this is only where I told the pleasant students should know some vector addition. This is not a great thing, but you can write the total result of last t or the result force will be equal to the summation of his horizontal component and the vertical component f x i plus f y j. So, f will be equal to f cos theta plus f sin theta. Whenever I put a error head, it indicates a vector. If you want, you can put here also. Okay, fine, nothing wrong in that. So, for this vector quantity, if you want to find the resultant magnitude, I will repeat once again, it is called as what? Resultant magnitude, then f will be equal to square root of fx squared plus fy squared. So, this is a formula. From mathematics, you should know that. So, f will be equal to, what is fx squared? It is nothing but f cos theta whole squared. What is fy squared? f sin theta whole squared. So, what is the answer? It will become f squared into cos square theta plus f squared into sin square theta. So, from both the term which is common, f squared is common. So, it will become what? Cos square theta plus sin square theta. Okay, the left hand side is f. So, which means what? We know that cos square theta plus sin square theta equal to 1. So, f will be equal to square root of f squared. What is square root of f squared? Is nothing but f, which means what does it mean? Sir, once again, you enter the same answer. Yeah, you enter the same answer. That is, whatever we resolve is right only. We just made understanding whether whatever we resolve is right or wrong. Yes, is right. Because the Gaussian component is what? F cos theta. And the vertical component is what? F sin theta. Got the logic. And one more angle we can find from this one. What is that? We have taken the cos theta. We have taken the sin theta. Now, we can take given tan theta. So, tan theta will be equal to what? Fy by Fx. Or it is what? It is equal to BC by AB. So, it is nothing but what? FY by FX. So, what is with theta? Theta will be equal to tan inverse of FY by FX. So, if you know the value of FY and FX, we can also find the angle between this resultant force and the horizontal. So, now you know how to find the magnitude. These are not related to projectiles. These are just vector, uh, basic uh, vector knowledge. Okay. So, do not confuse this with the projectile. There is nothing to do with projectile. This is just an idea which you should know before you are going to enter into the projectile. So, it is nothing but a vector addition and how to resolve a given vector into its horizontal component and vertical component. How to find the resultant of uh, uh, the uh, uh, resolved components, their magnitude and their angle. So, that is what we have discussed so far. That is what we discussed so far. Instead of F, it can be U, it can be V, all those things. That is fine. I hope we are just refreshed. What is meant by vector addition? Now let us continue further with the knowledge of vector addition. How to find the resultant? How to find the angle? Let us proceed further for the real projectile motion. Now only actually we are going to start with the projectile motion. Okay. So far what you discuss is only the prerequisite which is needed to understand the projectile motion. Okay. 
now i am going to be at point a and this is going to be the floor or the ground let us say it is going to be the ground i am going to throw the ball i have a ball in my hand i am going to throw by giving an initial velocity so that velocity is what so after that the i am going to give an initial velocity say u okay with an angle of theta to the ground with an angle of what theta to the ground i will repeat once again i am at a point a in the floor i have a ball in my hand i am going to throw the ball with an initial velocity say small u which is going to this ball is going to make an angle of what theta at the initial point this theta then will change because it is going to be attracted or influenced by the gravity so now the after giving the velocity the keeps on goes up and after a particular position it will come back it will come down why is coming down because of the gravity why is going up because the inch the momentum the force what we are given is more than the gravity and is the part the ball is going up but beyond certain thing this gravity will be more than the force what we are given so automatically what will happen this body will decelerate and will be attracted towards the ground and let us say the particle of the body is coming and resting at a point say b this point b can be anywhere simply i don't be it can be here it can be here it can be here so don't worry the point should be the ball should exactly land here only it can land anywhere based on the initial velocity what you have given so this curve what i have drawn is called as projectile what is called as projectile because any object or any body which is given initial velocity and whose path is determined or whose path is influenced by the gravity is known as projectile is known as what projectile motion okay now the knowledge of vectors will be helpful for us here now what is this this u what is this u is called as anyone can tell me velocity velocity is not exactly right then what is the u meaning of u initial velocity you are right so in your mind you should not tell u as velocity alone if you are going to tell velocity alone it is wrong then how do we have to tell we have to tell us initial velocity what is the unit of initial velocity meters per second the unit is whether it is velocity or initial velocity or final velocity they will be only meters per second but we should know is what initial velocity now you should also know how to write in vector form so u will be equal to u s i plus u y j how i written i written the form of vector i written in the form of what vector this is nothing but horizontal component this is nothing but what vertical component so i can take this diagram and separately draw here for a better understanding so this point a this is making an angle of theta this is my u so if i going to make this point this is nothing but my b this is multiplied by c so what will be ux now can anyone tell what the ux very good ux will be equal to what u cos theta what will be uy uy will be this one just now we have seen isn't it so what will be uy uy will be equal to u sin theta so that resultant initial velocity will be equal to is horizontal component plus is vertical component vector summation okay so i can write u equal to u cos theta of i plus u sin theta of j okay if you want to take once again the magnitude then u will be equal to what u square cos square theta plus u square sin square theta the answer will be what once again it will be u only why because u square of sin square theta plus cos square theta we know that sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 so square root of u square is u so both will be u will be equal to u so i don't want to bore you already we know all these concepts so u equal to u cos theta i plus u sin theta j similarly similarly my question is once again whether this u is in velocity whether this velocity will remain constant or it will vary i'll repeat the question i given initial velocity so the ball is moving now whether this velocity whatever i given will remain constant or keeps on it be changing yeah it will keep on changing why it keep on changing because the ball tries to goes up but it's been attracted or influenced by the gravity towards down and hence there's a force acting on the ball which will reduce its speed so the velocity will keeps on decreases so it will uh, either decreases or let us say uh, feel it is now it will change it will change so the velocity u will not remain constant it is a variable 
but initial position only is a constant. So last year the point A is a constant, initial loss is a constant, but after that this loss it keeps on changes. If you want to find the final loss, it will keep on changes. That's fine. Okay. So we should have think that one. Now let us come to similar to the velocity. This velocity use nothing but what? I'll repeat once again. It is nothing but what? Initial velocity. Similarly, I want to write what is acceleration. Acceleration will be equal to ax i plus ayj. <coughs> A will be what? Acceleration. What is ax? ax is the acceleration in the horizontal direction. What is ay? Acceleration in the vertical direction. Now you tell me whether this ax is a zero or it is a constant or it will be varying. So first of all you should know. So when I am going to kick a ball on the ground, there is a no action by the gravity because it is on the surface of the ground. So there is no influence. So the horizontal component of the acceleration is said to be zero. Why? Because it is just like the horizontal acceleration because there is no gravity acting. Only when you are jumping up, you will be coming down. Isn't it? Because it will be attracted by the gravity. But when I roll down on the ground, there is no action on the gravity. There is no influence on the gravity. Which means there is no acceleration along the horizontal surface. But there will be acceleration on the vertical surface. So if I am going to jump, if I am going to jump, what will happen? My acceleration, the ground will try to pull me down. So this is a G acting. That G is nothing but the acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity. And when you are going to try to move up, up, the gravity will be acting downwards. So that this is a negative sign. But when you are going to jump from top level to bottom level, that is a positive. That is what? Positive. So when a particle is going to move from top, bottom to top, a will be equal to minus g. When the particle is going to move from top to bottom, A will be equal to plus g. Because it is attracting. Both are in the same direction. But here it is in the opposite direction. So we can see here A equal to minus g of j. What is minus g? Because we are throwing the ball against the gravity. We are throwing the ball against the gravity. So A equal to minus g. But if you are going to find the magnitude, then A will also be equal to what? So root of g squared, so a will be equal to g. a will be equal to what? g is similar to what? Root of a square plus y squared. x component is 0. y component is what? Minus g squared. So it will become what? Plus g squared. Plus g square square root of a in taking, a will be equal to g. Now my question is this, what is a? Immediately my students will tell, a is nothing but initial acceleration because you are very cautious. Since you told you as initial velocity, you will also tell a is what? Initial acceleration. But here you can call the acceleration as any acceleration because the acceleration is going to be constant throughout. The acceleration is going to be constant throughout. Whereas the losses keep on changing. You keep on changing. But A will always remain constant. Please make a note. This type of motion is called as uniform acceleration motion. Why is it called as uniform acceleration? Why there is no variation? Because the acceleration due to gravity remains constant. Remains constant. Constant. Unless you go to the poles or unless you are going to be far away from the earth surface, you are moving to move away from the atmosphere, then the acceleration due to gravity may decrease. But normal uh, purposes, normal application, G is a constant. The acceleration due to gravity is constant. Let us continue further. We should know three basic equations of kinematics of motion. What is that? That is nothing but what? V equal to U plus AT. S equal to what? Ut plus half a d squared. V squared equal to what? U squared plus 2as. In some book, in some s, they will give us x. Okay, nothing wrong in that. So these three equations are known as kinematics of motion because these define the motion without considering the force which causes this motion. That is called as what? Kinematics. Kinematics means it will define the motion without considering the force which created this motion. If you are going to consider the force also which created this motion is called kinetics. It is called as what? Kinetics. So I want to tell to my students very clearly. If you are going to consider the force which causes this motion is called kinetic. And if you are going to consider only the motion without considering the force which causes this motion is called what? Kinematics. 
these three cases are called the kinematics of motion and here each and every term you should know in uh, very clearly you should know what is v what is u u is initial velocity what is a yeah a remains constant constant acceleration or uniform acceleration what about v final velocity what is the the time taken for the particle to move from initial velocity u to the final velocity v under an under an uh, influence of uniform acceleration say a so now you know what is v final velocity u means initial velocity t is the time taken for the particle to uh, move to uh, final velocity v from the initial velocity u when an uniform acceleration a is applied uniform acceleration a is applied so we know each and every term then what is s one more term is what yes yes is the distance covered or generally we call this as the displacement so yes is called as what displacement in some book they use x some book they use what x so you know displacement final velocity initial velocity acceleration and the time other things all other terms are coming so these three equations we are going to make use for our projectile motion we are going to make use of the projectile motion okay so fine now let us tell what is uh, instead of x i can also use x so x will be equal to what x not plus ut plus half a square so you may be immediately asking me a question sir why i include x not x not is nothing but the correct location of the particle sometime is going to be 0 comma 0 is origin the next not will be equal to 0 sometime in the problems when they are solving they will give the initially the particle is at a location say 2 comma 3 or 1 comma 4 so from there we have to calculate so we want to know the x not also mostly when the particle is going to be at origin the next not will be equal to 0 so don't worry about this term much now let us make it as 0 now let us make it as a 0 but when you are going to solve the problems when you are going to solve the numerals then there may be need from where you are starting you should know the initial location of the particle of the body all on the horizontal direction so that is nothing but x not so since you are not happy i am also removing this term now x not but while we'll solving the problem i will be taking this formula also now this is the of the form which form s equal to what ut plus half a square now i am telling x equal to what ut plus half a square now my question is whether this is u or ux whether it is u or ux yeah you are right now it is ux why it is ux because we want only the the distance is along the horizontal distance only so we have to have the horizontal component so you are right so x will be equal to u x into t plus half into it is ax into t squared into what t squared or the velocity along the x direction or the velocity along the x direction so we are going to have like this even though i am having velocity u but the point is going to move along the x direction means i want only ux or not u isn't it so that i put here as ux so what is ux if i know the angle theta we know that ux equal to what u cos theta so so what will be the acceleration acceleration will also be not the vertical or the inclined one it should be only the horizontal because x is along the horizontal direction x is along the horizontal direction so i am putting ax t square what is the value of ax yeah you are right ax equal to 0 why ax equal to 0 because the acceleration along the ground is 0 already we have explained so it will be boring for you so ax equal to 0 so what is x now x will be equal to what is ux u cos theta into t u cos theta into t what is now t from this t will be equal to x by u cos theta so if you know the time you can find what are the distance the particle may move if you know the initial velocity u and the theta if you want time if you know the distance and the theta and u you can find what the time taken that's it so for example if this is my x up to here the particle has traveled let us say this is the x if you know the theta and the u if you know the uh, theta and u uh, so theta and u and uh, if you know the time taken also then i can find x or i can if i know the x u and the theta i can find what t so we got the value of time of flight to reach the horizontal distance so first i am making use of this second equation s equal to u plus half x squared i am replacing s with x because i want to clearly mention this on the horizontal direction will be equal to x not plus u plus half x squared then i am removing x not because 
that is only the initial position of the particle. Then let us assume now it is at the origin 0, 0. So now u will be along the velocity along the x direction that is nothing but ux. ux will be equal to what? u into cos theta because we have derived already. So ux equal to u cos theta into a t plus half a d squared. Here a is also not a, it is along the horizontal direction so it is ax. But we know that ax equal to 0 because it is not influenced by the gravity. So finally what we got? We got that x equal to u cos theta into t. From this if you know any uh, three things you can find the fourth one. You can find the fourth one. So I have found t equal to x by u cos theta. Okay, got it. Shall we move to the y-axis now? Now we have completed the y-axis. The ball is not only going to travel on the horizontal direction, it is also going to travel on the y direction. So what will be the y? So instead of x, I can use the same equation for y. So y will be equal to, so if you want you can put this as y. This horizontal distance as what? Horizontal direction is x. Okay. So now y will be equal to y naught. As usual, y naught is the initial position. Let us take it 0, 0. So this y naught becomes 0. Ut. Now this ut, whether it will be ux or uy. Whether it will be ux or uy. You are right. Uy of t plus half into whether it is a or ax or ay. Which one I have to put now is a vertical motion. Yeah, you are right. It is ay of t squared. Ay of t squared. So now we can find that y will be equal to, what is uy? uy will be equal to what? This component, uy will be equal to u sin theta. So u sin theta into t plus half into, what is ay? The part is, the body, the of this moving upwards. So it is minus g. The acceleration due to gravity is not zero because we are considering the vertical motion. And it's also going against the gravity. So I told it's minus g of t squared. So what are the value of y now? y will be equal to u sin theta t minus, I am taking this minus before, so minus half g t squared. Let us continue further. Now we got the horizontal distance covered x equal to u cos theta t, y equal to u sin theta t minus half g t squared like this. Now my question is whether t in both equations are same or different? I will repeat the question. Whether the t in equation number 3 and 4 are same or different? They are same. Whenever a body is uh, traveling in the same time only, it is reaching this much of horizontal distance and it is reaching this much of vertical distance. So the times remains constant in both 3 and 4. That you should, I hope you can easily understand. Yeah, good. So now t from equation number 3, t will be equal to what? x by u cos theta. This is how you got from 3. How you written 3, t along here, here so it becomes x by u cos theta. Now you substitute substitute 3 in 4, we will get y will be equal to u sin theta, instead of t, you substitute this value. So, it will become what? x by u cos theta. Instead of t, I am substituting this value, minus of g, instead of t, you substitute this value, x by u cos theta, the whole squared, because t squared. I hope it is very simple, it is not that much difficult. So u u get cancelled. Sin theta by cos theta will be called tan theta. So y equal to x tan theta or tan theta into x both are same minus half g by u squared cos square theta into x squared. So like this equation we got it. We got an expression y equal to what? Tan theta into x minus half into g into uh, g by u square into cos square theta into x square. Now you tell me which are variable in this equation and which are constant in this equation. Here y is the uh, dependent variable and x is the independent variable. Okay, generally the right hand side is the independent variable. So here the variables are x and y. I do not want to confuse with the very independent variable or dependent variable. Here the variables are what? x and y. What about theta is a constant. O is a constant at what angle the initial the particle is thrown. So that initial angle is theta that is remains constant. So it is a number. So let us say it is a degree. Term 30 we have certain value. Let us say the theta is 45 degree. Tan 45 is a number, it is a constant. So tan theta is a constant. What about g? It is a constant 9.81. Sometimes they will ask you to take 10 meter per second square. Nothing wrong in that. So g is a constant. What about u then? u is also a constant. Why? 
the body is thrown with the insulin velocity of 30 meters a cane, 20 meters a cane, like that they have given the problem. So, the insulin velocity is also a constant. So, what I mean from this equation is that other than y and x, all other terms are constant. All other terms are what? Constant. So, why are talking here about constant variables? Because I can write now this equation as what? y equal to bx plus cx squared. What is b then? b will be equal to tan theta. b will be equal to what? This term is something but what? Tan theta b. What will be c? c will be equal to minus half of g by u squared cos squared theta. Sir, why you have written like this? What is the importance of writing this equation like this means? It is of the form what? y equal to cx squared. It's a equation of a parabola. It's a equation of a parabola. So finally, what we come to know is that the vertical motion which is traversed by this object will be in the form of a parabola. This shape, what you have drawn, this will be in the form of what? This is the vertical motion. We are not actually considering the horizontal motion because the body is not moving like this. The body is moving along the vertical direction. So this vertical motion took the shape of a parabola. Will definitely take the shape of what? parabola with the constant b b tan theta and the constant c b what minus g by 2 u squared cos squared theta. Now without doing the experiment or without knowing the actually how the particle will go, if you know the mathematics and this physics, you will be in a position to tell that always when you are going to give an initial velocity and it is going to be influenced by the gravity, the path travelled by the particle will be a parabola because we have arrived at this expression. I hope now you will be able to enjoy what you have learnt with the help of mathematics and physics. So without knowing the real physics uh, or without doing the experimentation, we can determine what will be the path which will be travelled by the projectile. We will continue further. So this equation is the equation of the parabola which we got like this. We will write the values of uh, B and C over here. So which may be useful in future. So B will be equal to tan theta and uh, c will be equal to minus g by 2 u squared cos squared theta. Yeah, you know all these things. I hope we can erase from here. And the general equation of this uh, projectile is a parabola. The shape of the projectile is a parabola because we know the formula y equal to bx plus c into x squared. Now, I will draw a diagram once again. So I am throwing a ball from A. It is going and reaching at a point B on the floor. Let, let it be the weight action. There are two conditions at O equal to 0. There are two conditions at O equal to 0. What, is the, what are they? In this motion of the object, there are two conditions at O equal to 0. What are they? at A and B. What is A? A is at the initial position. What is B? Final position. At both the places, O equal to 0. Or if I am going to take some other location, say this point, let us say this point is uh, D, then there is some O. If I am going to take another point E, let us say some other Y. So the O is not a 0 other than the point A and B. Other than the point A and B. Now, I am not worried about the initial position. What will be the value of y at point B? What is the value of y at point B? Now only you told sir it is 0. Yes. At B, y equal to 0. Why I want to tell this one means I will substitute this y equal to 0 at B over here. So this, this equation substitute y equal to 0 in equation 4, which means at the point B. I am substituting because this equation, this equation can be employed to anywhere from this point to this point. Okay. Including A and B. Including A and B. So, I am applying at the point B. So, Y equal to 0. So, which makes what? 0 equal to U sin theta T minus half into G T squared. Okay. I will take this term also this side. So, minus U sin theta T equal to minus of g t squared. I will cancel out minus and minus or I multiply both sides by minus sign or minus 1 and I will cancel t and t also. I will cancel 1t and 1t. So finally what I am going to get, I am going to get small t 
will be equal to 2u sin theta by g. 2u sin theta by g. Now, what is this t equal to 2u sin theta by g? That may be your, that is my question. So, what is the value of t equal to what? 2u sin theta by g. And this is nothing but the time taken by the particle to travel from A to B. So, how you are telling? Because we applied at the point B, which means the particle has fully traveled and have reached the, uh, reached the point B. So, this is called as time of flight. Some otherwise, this T also we can write as capital T because the time of flight it can be generally called as capital T will be equal to what? 2u sin theta by g. This is the total time taken by the particle to travel from A to B. To travel from A to B, it depends upon your initial velocity. It's deadly proportional. If the velocity is more, the time of flight will also be more. If the angle of inclination is more, then your time taken must be more. And it is inverse proportional to the gravity. So it will try to bring down the time to rest. Uh, it will bring the particle to rest at the earliest. And hence it is inversely proportional. So the time of flight, here T is called what? Time of flight is gone by 2 Q sin theta by G. So this is nothing but what? My, I hope you are able to appreciate this equation, isn't it? So, without doing the actual instrument, by knowing this parameter itself, we will know how much time it will take for the particle to travel from this particular thing to this particular, uh, from A to B. Okay, fine. So, we got the value for what? Uh, this one, 2 centimeter by G. Now, let us now come to the final last T. Final last T is nothing but what? V equal to U plus AT. I am going to use this kinematic of motion. I am going to use this kinematic of uh, motion. Okay. So, fine. So, what is uh, uh, we can write like this. Vx will be equal to what? Ux plus Ax into T. Okay. And now I am trying to invoke the second kinematic equation. Earlier so far we are working for S equal to U2 plus R by square because you, I want X and Y. Now I want to know the final loss T. Now I want to know the final loss T. Here I am trying to find X and Y. At what uh, location it may be taken after a particular time. That I can find what is the location out of X and Y. Now I want to know what is the final loss T. In the Arsenal direction as well as the vertical direction. So I am using this equation. V equal to what? U plus AT. So Vx equal to Vx plus Ax into T. So what is Vx? Vx only. What is Vx? We know Vx equal to what? U cos theta. What is Ax? What is Ax as? You told is right. It is 0 because there is no acceleration along the arsenal direction. So we can see the final velocity is also will be equal to the initial velocity equal to U cos theta. Let us see case number 5. Then let us go for the vertical component of the velocity. So it will become Vy. Vy will be equal to what? You are right. Uy plus Ay into T. What is Uy? It is nothing but U sin theta. What is Ay? It is minus g into t. It is nothing but my vy. If we want to know the final velocity, what will be v? v will be equal to vx of i plus vy of j. Which is nothing but what? v will be equal to u cos theta plus u sin theta of i plus u sin theta minus gt of j. So, this is the formula to find the final velocity. u cos theta plus U sin theta minus gt. Okay, are you clear how to find the final velocity? Uh, final velocity of the in the horizontal direction. Final velocity in the vertical direction. The resultant final velocity is nothing but the summation of the horizontal component and the vertical component. Okay, uh, let us continue further. So we know that x equal to what? U cos theta into t. What is this t and x? First of all, I should know. So, at any instant of time, what is my x from my origin? My origin is point A. So, after time t equal to 1 second, what is my horizontal distance? After time t equal to 2 seconds, the distance may be increased. What will be my x? Got the logic? So, this expression gives me a relationship between the time and the corresponding horizontal distance. 
got the logic now i have taken this equation x equal to what u cos theta at t from this equation i want to explain the physics if time increases the displacement also increases or the distance along the horizontal direction also increases and what is this capital t this capital t is the time when the particle reaches the point b that is the entire time of flight so when this capital t when the small t becomes capital t the object will go like this and come and falls and hit at the point b so when t equal capital t that becomes my total horizontal distance the total horizontal distance is nothing but call as what range the total horizontal distance becomes what range i will repeat once again we are finding capital t at the point b because there o equal to 0 from that we arrived at the expression t equal to what uh, 2 u sin theta by g that's fine then what is t time is t capital t is the time taken for the object to travel from a to b in, in the, on the influence of the gravity so there's a total time period so when is going to reach the point b what then when i going to put small t as capital t then it cover the entire horizontal distance the entire horizontal distance is nothing but cos range so if i going to substitute for t as capital t then it becomes what a constant which is nothing but what the maximum horizontal distance the maximum horizontal distance okay so i will try to substitute for t small t as capital t why because i want to know the maximum horizontal distance which the particle may travel okay so x will be equal to u cos theta into what is this capital t now you can substitute from here for t so this will become what 2u sin theta by g so it become what u into u will become u squared by g this can be written as what 2 sin theta into cos theta i'm just multiplying this u with this u so u squared by g 2 sin theta cos theta you know the formula what is 2 sin theta cos theta do you know that yeah you are right u squared by g of sin 2 theta so what is the now x becomes what the entire horizontal distance so i can rename this x as what capital r similarly i am replacing the small t as what capital t when small t becomes capital t it covers the entire time of flight when small x becomes capital r it becomes the total horizontal distance the particle may traverse the may travel so r equal to u squared by g of sin theta r equal to u squared by g of what sin theta now this r is called as the range so we found the formula for range equal to what u squared into sin 2 theta by g and whether this r i will ask you a question now whether this value of r whether this value of r will be equal to u squared by g r this value of r will be less than u squared by g r the value of r can be greater than u squared by g i am asking a question we know that r equal to what u squared by g into sin theta so these are the three conditions is available for me whether r will be equal to u squared by g or u squared by less than u squared by g or capital r uh, greater than u squared by g out of this three this is not at all possible why it is not at all possible be means because sin 2 theta can be more than 1 when sin 2 theta is more than 1 only r will be greater than what u squared by g for example i will tell r squared by g let us for example let us say r squared by g is 25 when this value of sin theta is more than 1 let us say it is 2 then my r will be equal to what 50 which means r is greater than what u squared by g which is nothing but what 50 is greater than what 25 this is possible only when my sin theta is greater than 1 but in any case sin 2 theta cannot be more than 1 but it can be less than 1 how sir you are telling let us put theta equal to 30 degree okay then 2 theta or i will put a theta equal to 15 degree so 2 theta will be equal to what 30 degree so sin 30 degree will be equal to what i hope it is off so it will become what r will be equal to 0.5 times of what u squared by g so i can get the value of r can be less than what u squared by g but the maximum value of r will be equal to what u squared by g i will repeat once, once again the statements the value of r at any instant of time can be more than u squared by 2g because i given an expression like this because sin 2 theta cannot be more than 1 
Science of theta can be for the you substitute for any value of theta. You don't believe me. You take you take theta equal to zero to three sixty degree and substitute and try to find the values. Definitely the value of sine theta will not be greater than one. So definitely the value of r cannot be more than what u squared by two g. This is violated. This is not possible. But now we are coming to two cases. It can be either equal to u squared by g or it can be less than u squared by g. When it can be less than by u squared by g, when theta is say fifteen degree, then there is a possibility it can be even less than u squared by g. But when it can be maximum, when r can be maximum means r can be r max when it is equal to what u squared by g, u squared by g. Got the logic? Then what will be the value of sine two theta? Sine two theta should be equal to one. When sine two theta equal to one means when sine theta is uh, when sine two theta will be equal to one. So sine of two into theta equal to forty five degree. Theta equal to what? Forty five degree. What is sine two into forty five? Sine ninety degree. What is sine ninety degree? One. So I can see when theta equal to forty five degree, I'll get the maximum range. What is the meaning is that if I'm going to throw the ball. I have to throw the ball at an initial velocity with an initial velocity at an angle of 45 degree to the horizontal. Then this ball will cover the maximum distance. Then this ball will cover the maximum distance. Now you can appreciate the usage of mathematics and physics. So if you are a cricket player or if you are going to be a football player and you want to kick a ball and you want to have the maximum distance to be covered, then you should know that this path of this football or cricket ball will be the form of a parabola. And it will and it will cover its maximum distance when theta is going to be what forty five degree when theta is going to be forty five degree. So R is going by u square by u square into sine theta by g and R max will be equal to u square by g when theta is equal to forty five degree. I hope uh, you'll be able to understand and appreciate what we have dealt so far. Are you happy? Are you able to understand the concepts? What is R? Or the maximum distance covered by the object uh, for over the entire time of flight. But if I want this R to be maximum, then we have to throw the ball at an angle of what? 45 degree. Then I can get R max equal to what? U squared by g. Okay. Now let us come to the last part of this project. Eh? I hope it's somewhat lengthy, but I hope it is interesting. I hope I am not boring you. So you can see here, if I am going to throw the ball and it's going to come down. What is the last thing I want to know? What is the maximum height which can be reached by the ball? Okay, already we know what is the r. Also, we know what is r max. We know what is the time for the flight. Okay, and you know what is the horizontal component, the velocity, vertical component, the velocity. What is the shape of this projectile? All this we have discussed, and the only thing which is left out is nothing but what is the maximum height the ball can reach? The ball can. Reach the or the particle can reach when a particular motion is uh, uh, employed. Okay, fine. For that, we have to use the third kinematic equation. What is the formula? V squared equal to u squared plus two a s. This is the third kinematics of motion equation. Okay, so here we are bothered about the vertical height. So which component of velocity will better? Yeah, you are right. We have to take the vertical component of velocity. So v o squared that is. The final velocity v is nothing but the final velocity in the vertical direction will be equal to the what uh, initial velocity along the y direction plus two into a y. It's not a thing. What is this? Yes, this is not no horizontal. This is the vertical. So I will put as this is h. I will put as nothing but the height the object will be moving. That is nothing but what by h. Okay, so. Uh, I can see here v y squared equal to what is u y? Already we know u sine theta. So u y squared will be equal to what? U sine theta the whole square plus two. What is a y? The ball is going against the gravity, so it's minus g. What is h? H is h is only. So my question is, when the ball reaches the top, a b let us see, call this part as c. When the ball reaches the topmost position, what will be its vertical velocity? In which the ball is going uh, up and up, slowly its velocity decreasing. And the, when the ball is going to the top position, momentarily at the maximum height, the vertical component of the velocity will be zero. 
on coming further as we discuss when the ball reaches the maximum height the vertical component of the velocity will be momentarily zero because the velocity goes on decreasing because the gravity is attracting and when it reaches the topmost point the maximum height point momentarily at, at a moment the vertical component of the velocity will become zero so that is whether u or vy that is vy because the final velocity because this is not the initial velocity the final velocity that's also vertical component will become zero which means at c vy will be equal to zero so employing this profile at the point c so v y square equal to 0 now now height will become what at c equal to 0 at a c v y equal to 0 h will become what h max so it will become u square sin square theta minus 2 g h max so from this what is h max so it is minus u square sin square theta equal to minus 2 g h max so it become h max will be equal to u squared by 2g of sin square theta. So, this is the formula to obtain the maximum height the object can reach upon the projectile motion. So, h max, the h will become h max at C. Here, h will not be h max. Whereas, at C, it is what? h max. Here, h will not be equal to what? h max. So, at C only, it will be h max, where the instantaneously at the location my vertical component of the loss will be zero invoking that equation the kinetic motion of uh, equation of motion namely v square equal to square plus 2 as we arrive at that h max equal to u square by 2 g of sin square theta we also the time taken for flight from a to b is done by 2 u sin theta by g as well as you know the formula for finding the range 